All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the Tahoe because I still get a lot of questions on it. So this is going to be a video going over the entire setup that is done to my Tahoe. <laughs> guys welcome back to the channel i have sgmp on the tv in the shop tonight we're watching the uh, radio versus the world qualifying number two so a lot of people ask me about the tahoe uh even though there's probably a dozen videos on it the blower install the trans install the gears all that stuff but what i haven't done with this car yet is a complete overview of everything that's done to it so hopefully this clears up any questions that anyone had and uh, we'll start from the front and work our way to the back. I'm not going to put it on the lift tonight because I'm being lazy, but I'll tell you everything that's done under the truck and show you everything that's done under the hood. All right, so we'll start under the hood here, and I'll flip back and forth between me talking to the camera and pointing things out as we go along. So most everyone knows that this truck started off as just a 5.3 naturally aspirated Z71. When I bought it, it had like 180,000 miles on it, and it was basically stock. I mean, it had stock, wheels, tires, everything. The only thing that was done was the grill had been painted and it had different headlights in it. So when I bought the truck, it lasted about six months and I decided to put a motor in it. So this is the factory block, factory heads. And what I did was I put a set of GM pistons in it uh, because the pistons that were in it were, um, they weren't round, they were oval. So... <clears throat> Started off with the engine, so had it all refreshed, and I put a real small cam in it. It was like a 218, 220 cam. Didn't make a whole lot of power. It was pretty lazy. So instead of putting another cam in it, I decided to put a converter in it. So it started off with a Yank Torque Thruster 3200, I believe it was. So since then, all that's been upgraded. But the engine now is you know, still stock block. I changed out the cam. So now this truck has a 224, 228, with about 580 lift uh, custom grind cam from RPM Motorsports that Ryan spec'd out for me. So it's got a little bit more thump now and I'll fire it up here in a minute so that you guys can hear it. That cam was done before I decided to put the supercharger on it. If I had known that I was going to put a blower on it, I might have put a little bit different cam, but it still makes good power for what it is. For those wondering, it makes 530 rear wheel horsepower and right at 500 foot pounds of torque. So you can figure about 660 at the crank with the blower on it and everything else that's done to it right now. So the blower swap was done a year ago, almost to the day I started the blower swap. So this is a factory LSA blower off of a CTSV but it does have a ZL1 lid on it with ProMeth methanol injection. Now the methanol is not hooked up right now. I just haven't hooked it up yet because I really haven't had the need to. So ProMeth injection, ZL1 lid with the AN adapters on the front. Now these AN adapters run through a five gallon water tank over here. There's a stock CTSV water pump down there, a uh, heat exchanger pump I should say. And then behind the grill here, which you may or may not be able to see, there's a stock ZL1 heat exchanger. So on front of the blower, we have a 255 upper pulley and a stock truck balancer. So right now, this truck makes right at 11 pounds of boost, which is all that I wanted to make. That's plenty for what I'm doing, you know, for basically having a stock short block, stock heads and all that. Um, speaking of stock heads, the valve springs are a single valve spring, they're not dual valve spring, uh, with stock rockers and 7400 hardened push rods. Water tank. So currently has Dex Cool mixed in with it because it's been cold here in North Carolina lately. All right, so topping off the supercharger, we have a 
custom stainless steel pie cut air intake because people hate it when I call it a cold air because it sits right in the engine bay. So that is a cold air intake, intake tube, k and filter, nothing out of the ordinary. So you also see on top of the supercharger, we have an Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator because this was a return style fuel system from the factory. So I had to run a return style regulator and that returns right here off of the factory LSA rail which is really expensive by the way. So if you guys do a blower swap, try to get it with a fuel rail attached. So coming over to the side of the engine, we have pace setter coated inch and seven eighths long tube headers, and it has a mild steel catless Y pipe. So I don't run cats on this truck. Uh, I'm able to tune the O2 sensors out of it. So no worries as far as uh, having cats on this truck. All right, now this truck from the factory was a flex fuel truck. So going along with the blower and all that stuff, I tuned this truck for E85 as well. So I didn't have to add a sensor. I didn't have to add lines. All I did was turn it on in the computer and I can run E85 on this truck, which is what I do. But to support the E85, what I did was I put a Deech Works uh, DW400 pump in tank. And there is a video that I will link at the end of this one on how to install that in a truck or a Tahoe. And then I have 85 pound fast injectors. Now at 85% ethanol, which is what I can get here during the summer, injector duty cycle is like 95%. So if I wanted to make any more power, I'd have to have a bigger injector. So with 85 pound injectors and the Deech Works DW400 pump, I'm maxed out at about 530 rear wheel horsepower. So you can't see, but injectors down here. And then the only really weird thing you have to do with the LSA blower is I ran a ZL1 map sensor, which is two and a half bar. And then I have my inlet air temp sensor in the lid. So you're getting actual inlet air temp instead of air temp coming in through the air filter. So this runs a stock Tahoe throttle body with an ICT billet adapter plate. And also because this is a cathedral port head and a square port blower, I have ICT billet adapter plates under the blower as well. So as far as the engine goes, really not much else to tell. Um, it's basically from the blower down, you could call it stock except for the camshaft and then with the headers bolted to it and all that stuff. So before I put the blower on, this truck made 330 rear wheel horsepower. So the blower added 200 horsepower with 11 pounds of boost and with the 85. Okay, so torque converter. Uh, I kept with Yank for the torque converter, but the truck thruster 3200 that I had in this wasn't really suited for making this much horsepower or for a positive displacement blower application. So called up the guys at Yank and they sent me a Pro Truck 2800, which is what they recommend for this style blower, this cubic inch motor for about the power that I was trying to make. And I honestly love it. The torque converter in this truck is amazing. It drives great. And when you get down on the gas, it goes. So totally happy with my Yank torque converter. Um, I put that in the transmission that was in the truck that was a mildly built 4L60. After I did the blower and that torque converter, it lasted about two weeks and the transmission broke. So what I have for a transmission now is an RPM transmissions level six plus, And I will tell you what that is. So in typical video fashion, I'm going to point the camera towards the truck and read you a list of what's done in the transmission. The RPM transmissions level six plus basically consists of their heavy duty clutch packs, a reinforced sun shell, double caged sprag and billet servos, sleeved input drum, billet overrun piston and a five pinion planetary. I also upgraded the low roller clutch at the same time. And there was something else that they did. I think it's a sun in caged something or other. I really don't know transmissions that well, but what I talked to those guys about was what I was doing, which is making this much power, this heavy of a truck and so on and so forth. And this is what they recommended to me. So the transmission retails for 3,200 bucks and the upgrades that I did above the level five were another 300 bucks. And then I had to pay to get it shipped. So I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can go on their website and check out all their transmissions. But everyone gives me hell because I have a 4L60 in this truck and I, oh, you should have swapped a 4L80 and so on and so forth. RPM Transmissions builds the best 4L60s in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And I beat the living hell out of this truck, and I have not had a single problem out of it yet. Because I said that, I'm going to go drive it tomorrow and it's probably going to break. But 
RPM transmissions, this thing has been flawless with the Yank torque converter in it. And the power I make, I mean, when I step on the gas, this thing will burn the tires until I let off the throttle, which is really cool. I need to get some videos of that. The problem is, being daylight savings time, it's dark by the time I get out of work. But videos like that, watch out for them, because I'm going to do some stupid stuff with this thing. Okay, last but not least, as far as upgrades go on the Tahoe, after the engine was done, torque converter, transmission, about another two weeks, I broke the rear end. And these differentials are notorious for braking. And uh, it actually shattered all the spider gears inside the diff. So what I have done with the rear end, I upgraded to an AAM gear and it's still 373 gear uh, because I didn't want to have to change front and rear. So Z71s came with 373s. And then I also upgraded to a Detroit True Track differential. I was going to go with a locker, but because it really is just a street driven truck, I went with their True Track differential. And it's been flawless as well. So I set up the gears in another video, which I will put at the end of this video. You guys can check that out as well. That basically does it for the build of the Tahoe. If you guys have any questions, if I missed anything, be sure to comment below and I'll answer your questions as soon as I can. Love this truck. It's absolutely a blast. 530 horsepower in a 4,000 pound SUV, 5,000 pound SUV is incredibly fun. It's stupid to drive. And don't forget, you can go on my channel's page and scroll back through videos that I've done before, and there is an in-depth of the blower install, the transmission install, header install, rear end. So everything that I've done to this truck, I've done a video on. So if you want to see a little bit more in-depth on how I built the diff, check it out. Just go over, be sure you subscribe on the channel, and scroll back through the videos, and you'll see everything that I've done to this truck. Don't forget, guys, new website is up with High PSI TV merchandise. We have... Hats, koozies, t-shirts, hoodies, and I'm looking on doing another t-shirt design here shortly, so be on the lookout for that. And be sure that you check me out on Instagram. This is where you can find the day-to-day -day stuff that I do up at RPM Motorsports and when I come home and work in the shop here, when I'm not editing videos and all that kind of crazy stuff. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. It's coming up on warm weather, so we're going to be out racing and doing some more cool stuff with the RPM Motorsports shop cars. And all the guys from RPM Motorsports are going to be hanging out as well. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.